Dark in about an hour. Better get some landings, huh? Yeah. Why don't we go on back to Ponderosa? Maybe they've seen something back there. Yeah. about wandering off on your own before. You know, try as I may, I can't break him of the habit. Dear Jess, and what does a minister do with a backsliding horse? Now, Pastor Avery. What have you done with the flowers that you were supposed to be? I seem to have dropped them. Well, I'll fetch them, and you can keep an eye on the beast. All right. Something's wrong. Judith. Hey! Pastor, Miss Judith. Oh. Good evening, horse. We're out picking flowers for the church. Well, we're out looking for Jamie. Oh, my goodness. I, uh, I hope nothing's wrong. Well, we have reason to believe that he's been hurt. He's lost. He didn't take the roads. That's where we've been looking, in the roads between the schoolhouse and the Ponderosa. Well, well, we haven't been on the Tully Road. Little Joe's up there. Uh, well, we'll keep our eyes open and say a little prayer. And if there's anything else we can do, Huss, let us know. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, thank you, Mr. Judith. Judith. You mustn't let it trouble you, dear. Jess. Hmm? We'd better go back to town. It's getting late. So I'll just uh, pick up the flowers I dropped. I'm sure they'll find him before dark. Jamie. not find him? No. What about the other men? Any of them get back? Shorty and Bates come back. They find nothing. I think we better send Paul a telegram. Didn't find him. Not a thing. Did you get a chance to talk to the school now? Said the same as the youngin said. Jamie's been full of talk all day about picking blueberries. Yeah, we just got back from Marshall Bluffs. That's where she reckons he went to. Harv? Right over and get that sent off to Paul, would he? Well, this thing might be over before you, Paul, can get back here from San Francisco. You sure you want to worry him about this? We don't have any right to keep it from him. Yeah, you might drop by the bunkhouse and tell the men to get ready to form a search party for tonight. Tell them to be prepared to search all night if they have to. Thank you.
This rock. It's Jamie, isn't it? Yeah, it's his rock. taught him the same way he taught me. If he's hurt or he's lost, he knows what to do. Yeah. But if he'd remembered and could, he'd be home by now, wouldn't he? And he ain't. What do you really think? I don't know what to think, Joe. I know we gotta keep up some hope. We gotta hope he's still alive. <sighs> of course, if that wound got infected, he could have blood poison, a fever. He could be holed up somewhere unconscious. I don't know. I don't know what to think. I'll tell you what. You take the other fellows and ride on south, make a sweep down that direction. I got another idea. What? I'm going to go see Judith Corman. Look, Joseph, she knew he was hurt, and she knew he wasn't on the road. Of course she knew. She knew you were searching for him. That's why. No, no, no. Before I got there, she knew. It wasn't so much what she said as the way she said it. You can't believe in that stuff. It's like fortune telling. Well, Joe, we both know that she's been right in the past, don't we? Or lucky. Well, this time, let's hope it ain't all luck. Some more men. We've still got a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, well, if you if you need an extra man, let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Good luck.
Judith, I have something I want to show you. Please, Hoss, don't do that. It's Jamie's kerchief. We found it out on the trail. Judith, when we met out on the road, before I even mentioned it, you knew that Jamie was lost. Just a guess, Hoss? Well, whatever you did know, though. It's just a feeling. Fine, a feeling, a, a power, whatever you... Don't call it power. Well, whatever. Judith, I need your help. You were right, Jamie was lost, and he still is. I was right about that stagecoach in Montana, too, wasn't I? You saw them run me out of there, they'll run me out of here. If I even try to do what you're asking me to do. Judith, this is just between the two of us. I've never mentioned that incident in Montana, and I never will. I can't. Judith. I want you to help me save Jamie's life. If those people in Montana had listened to you, they could have saved their lives. Well, I didn't want to know. I don't want to know things that make people frightened around me. And I don't want people coming around and asking me for help. Besides, sometimes when I know things, I don't always know what they mean. Well, let me decide what they mean. Sometimes I know things, and now I don't know anything. Judith, please try. Look, Hoss, I have, for the first time since I was nine years old, the first chance for real happiness. Jess Avery is going to go to London in three months. He offers me his love. And a share in his peaceful world. Do you want to deny me that? I owe the Cartwrights a great deal. But I really do think that it's very unfair of you to ask. Yeah. I'm sorry. Good day, Judith.
caught you. See how your little secrets come out? At last I found out that sometimes Judith Coleman does sit still. My mind was active. Does that count? <laughs> you know, I found no such flower in England. How do you keep them so fresh? That's one of my secrets. Is it? I know another one of your little secrets. You actually managed to get in to see old Mrs. Abernathy. Oh, yes, she is a dear, isn't she? Mm, an impossible old dear. You know, that's what she says about you. Me? What, impossible? Yes, yeah, she thinks you're a bit, uh... I know. She thinks I'm putting on airs and graces. She thinks I'm a visiting British intellectual. <laughs> she obviously doesn't know me. And when she gets to know me, it'll be time for me to leave. Well, you needn't worry. They'll all come round. No. I'm the one who has to come round. And I will, with your help. Neither is the man without the woman, nor the woman without the man in the Lord. You're quoting again? Yes, that's uh, St. Paul's first epistle to the... to the Romans, I think. I find it much easier to quote his words than uh, use my own, especially when I'm writing a sermon. Words are so meaningless. Aren't they? I'm sorry, Jess, I didn't mean what you just said. I just mean that... Well, I guess I mean that there is another sense. Where words are just... Oh, they're not good enough, are they? What's troubling you, Judith? Won't you tell me? I mean, this isn't like you. I'm sorry, Jess. It's just one of my moods. I have them occasionally. I hope they'll only be occasionally. Well, I... I expect you to be human. As I hope sometimes uh, you will forget that uh, I'm a minister. Can you forget that you are? Well, I'll try. your future husband. Won't you tell me what's wrong? The boy, Jamie Cartwright, that's... what... That's really all that it is, Jess, that's all. Don't worry about him. I mean, they'll find him. Yes, but suppose they don't. Then we'll pray. We'll have a prayer meeting. We must have faith, Judith. You know, faith can move mountains. Suppose were another way. But there couldn't be another way, could there? There isn't another way, of course not. All set? Right. All out, folks. She's ready to roll. I sure hope you get there in time. I mean... That they find him. Yeah, thank you. I should appreciate you speeding up the relay. No. You worked as hard as anyone hooking them horses up. Maybe you could slip a little to the driver. He's got the hard chore ahead. I'll do that. And I'll uh, spell him a bit if he needs it. Don't forget to telegraph Virginia City. Give him your best estimate as to when we'll be getting in. All right. Yes, Hoss. 
Follow the stream. Follow the stream. Anybody, but you have young lady wait for you. Oh. Miss Judith. Oh, hello, horse. I guess I've only been thinking of myself, haven't I? Well, you're here. That's all that counts. Sit down, please. Thank you. He must be cold. Something's come to you. His shoulders hurt. He, he maybe fell? No, I'm, I'm sorry, Hoss. Something's hurt him. Something big. Like a bear? There's bear up in those woods when the blueberries are ripe. They don't normally attack, but they will. They can be awful mean. Could that be it? I knew that you were going to come back to me if you didn't find him. Hoss, it, it is so easy for me to misinterpret what I see, or, or for people to misinterpret what I say I see. They make it into whatever they want it to be, you see? And that's why they think it's something ugly in me. <laughs> well, but you've always used it right. I mean, you've helped people with it. You're helping us now. Well, at least I know now that I can't stop it. I can't run away to England. That was just a foolish dream. You haven't told Jess about this? You know what he'll say the minute he finds out. You told him nothing about it? Do you know who led that mob that drove me out of Montana? A minister, Hoss. A righteous man of the cloth. Yeah, but he was no, no Jess Avery. Hot coffee! Uh, here, why don't you take your wrap off and sit down? Thank you. And a little food. Good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You know, Hoss, I've never understood why this thing happens to me or how it happens to me. But it uses me. I don't use it. Well, I hope that, that you decide that you can help us. And if you do, I promise you that it'll be between just the two of us. It must be, Hoss. It's not just a matter of my losing Jess. That's just a dream. But if this town finds out, then I have to leave. And it means running again, and maybe not finding friends like the Cartwrights. You want a better promise? I suppose I do. Well, I'd like to promise you the world, Judith. But I can't do that, obviously. But I want Jamie back, and I want him back bad. I promise you that if anybody finds out about it, you won't have to run. All right, Horace. This afternoon, I was out riding. And I saw a little red-headed boy fall to the ground. I was thinking of Jamie. And I got an impression of bubbling water. Bubbling water, like a creek or a spring. Yeah. There's three creeks out at Washoe Bluffs. Well, uh, is any one of them in particular a favorite of his? No, not that I know of. Is there something that stands 
slender, something I think he's very fond of. Like a tree? Um, yes, but it's smaller and it sways. And I, you know, I feel that it belongs to him. A feather? A feather, that's he's, it, it's a feather. He's got a feather in his hat. Oh. Uh, and he, he bends and he drinks, and he drinks water. Yeah, and what? Oh, I'm sorry, Oz. I can't tell you anything more than I know. I know it's so little to go on. No, no, no. It's quite a bit. It's plenty to start on. Oz, nothing has meant more to me than the friendship and the kindness of the Cartwrights. Judith, I think you should consider telling Jess about this. I, I know him, and I think he'll understand. No, Oz, no, he won't. Where's Haas? He's up ahead somewhere. I don't know why we're looking here anyway. Haas has his reasons or we wouldn't be here. Seems to me we've already lost half a day. out there, you'll have to leave a trail. <laughs> Nothing down here but me and a played out horse. Now, Hoss is working his way upstream. Why don't you work your way through the woods? We'll meet back where Hoss found the hat. I well, got everything right so far, anyway. Yeah. Then he went straight into the woods. I've told him a thousand times when he's lost to stay out of the woods. And he lost his trail once, we'll find it again. Yeah, the same way. I'm gonna go get Judith. Come on, Hoss. We'd have followed this stream anyway. We'd have found the hat without her. I don't think so, Joseph. She said a stream or a spring. I don't think I'd ever come this far from Marshall Bluffs. You take the men, send them on in. What do you mean, send them in? I gotta protect her secret, Joe, and I don't think she'd ever come down here if she thought those men were here. All right, I'll send them back for fresh horses, but I'm not gonna keep them from coming back out here. An hour's all we need. Head back to the ranch, get fresh mounts. Message from Mr. Cartwright. He'll be down the stage at seven o'clock. Wants his horse left here. Joe says for him come straight to Masaka Lake. Ain't found the boy yet, huh? No, but if we do, in the meantime, we'll let you know. Hey, Hob. Pastor Avery. Have you had any success yet? Some, but not enough. Oh boy. You must all be exhausted. We are, sir, but we gotta keep trying. Hey, Hav. Yes. 
He's climbing. Could he be climbing? Well, where would he climb? Just up, Joe. A wounded animal will always climb. I can't believe he'd climb, not in the shape he's in. That's probably just the reason he's doing it. If the boys hurt bad, he'd head for the high country. I will right, we'll start at the top. I'll work down. I saw him in a dark place. You mean like, like a cave? No. Pause it. Well, it could be something worse. Now, you're doing what you told me not to do. Trying to make something out of nothing, maybe. Isn't that Miss Corman down there? Yes. I wonder what she's doing here. Joe found something. Sounds like someone found something. What are you doing here? I'm just trying to help. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, hasn't someone told you? Why else would you know to come? Uh, these people are my parishioners. It's my duty to be here. Oh, yes, it's your duty to warn the wicked away from her way before she dies of her iniquities. It's usually shouted at me. I'm sorry, I don't quote it quite correctly. It's from Leviticus, isn't it? Or is it Deuteronomy? I don't understand you, Judith. I... I've never shouted the scriptures at you. I thought you had a faith that was fine and strong. Why do you mock it now? I don't mock it. The things that happen to me make my faith only stronger. Don't talk riddles, sir. Just give me a simple explanation. Very well. Simply, I see things. I see things and I know things other people don't see and don't know. How? I don't know how. I don't know. My mother called it second sight, but whatever it is, I'm not pretending. I don't pretend, especially with a child's life. Judith. <laughs> Do you really believe that you have this boy's life in your hands? Jess, I'm not asking for it. People come to... Oh, no, Jess, no. No, 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 not my hands. God's hands. Oh, Judith. Do you really believe that you have special powers? Not power, Jess. Don't say power. I don't want power. How can I make you understand that what I see, I know. I know it as surely as I know that I am or that God is. And when you were talking to Hoss just now, were you telling him something you think you've seen? Yes, that I think I've seen. And I'm going to find him and tell him. Judith! Judith! Judith. Judith! Judith, look, we have to talk. Well, not now. Please, the Cartwrights are in desperate need. Look, the Cartwrights are expert trackers. They're woodsmen. They're plainsmen. They don't know where to look. 
And you do? Yes, I have seen. Then we'll try and find that place together, you and I. But don't lead the Cartwrights off on a wild goose chase. Jess, you don't believe me. Now you have a chance to prove yourself. <laughs> Let up some. He's been gone here about an hour. Harv, you go on up where Joe is and see if he's found anything. I want to look around here for a while. Jamie! Jamie! Hunt, where are you? Over here, Pastor! We heard a shot in the news yet? Well, we, we found a trail. I don't know how long it's going to last. Harv told me you were going to come out and help us. Yeah. Pastor, this is my doings. I put her under a great deal of obligation. I understand. Look, Hoss, uh, if you found a trail, uh, I'm sure you'd like to follow it. Uh, we'll stay here and rest a while. Thank you. Hoss, um, I'd like to tell you something. Judith. There's something I've seen. Possibly you will have recognized it. It's, it's shaped like the hat. There's a, a tree that stands against the sky. It's like the feather. Like a lone tree? Yes, only it's growing out of, out of boulders. Well, I, I ain't seen nothing like that so far, Jude. But if I do, I'll recognize it. Thank you. Is that where he is? Thank you. Judith, I thought we agreed not to involve the Cartwrights. I don't think that we agree about hardly anything at this point. Well, let's try. Do you agree that perhaps you should have told me about this, um, this second sight? Perhaps. And why didn't you? Because... I was afraid of losing you. And I didn't want to take the chance. I mean, how could you know? I mean, I... I trusted you. I, that's why I asked you to marry me. I think perhaps you owed me a little trust in return. All right. All right. Suppose that I had told you what I told you today. Would you have reacted any differently than you did just right now? No. No, oh, I would have said... Uh, I would have said, believe what you want to believe, but don't involve others. Well, they involve me. Yes, I know, but supposing the boy is found dead five miles away from the place you told him to look. Could you live with that? Could I live with not telling them what I think I see, and don't. then he would be found alive? Look, don't play God. Apparently, you don't believe in what I'm doing. No, no, I don't. No. You are not the first minister to call me witch or accursed and to cast me out. But don't you worry, Jess. A witch would never consider marrying a man of the cloth. Hey, wait, Harv. This way. That way? Yeah. What would you do if you was lost, Harv? It's what I told Jamie, I imagine. Pick an objective. A goal you can keep your eyes on. You get to it, pick another goal. There you go. Just like that big knob rock up there, that lone pine out of it. Come on.
Paz. 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 I'm so cold. It's all right. It's all right, little buddy. Man, you're a mite hungry, too, aren't you? Come on, Joe. Joe. You'll be all right. You know, I, I, I got to thank you for helping to look for me. Don't thank me. Thank your brothers. Why, they never gave up searching for you. Not for a second. And everybody searched day and night. Yes, ma'am, I know. Why don't you get some sleep, huh? Nope. Oh, wait a minute, not yet. Doctor said you had to take some of this, little brother. All right. There you go. Drink him right down. Very good. Thank you, Hans. Good night, pal. Good night. Well, I just didn't know there was so much prejudice in this part of the country. Well, you have it in your small English villages, don't you? Yes, but uh, we gave up burning witches years ago. Well, so did we. Oh, I don't know. I don't suppose the time will ever come when people won't fear the strange and mysterious. Well, I pray for that day. And work for it, too, Pastor. I agree. Tell me. Do you honestly, seriously believe that Judith found your son? Well, I guess that's not as important as the fact that she believes it. And Hoss believes it. That Jamie is here now. Tell me. What do you believe? I'm not sure. I do know, though, that in every other way, Judith is a very extraordinary woman. Yes, she is. Well, I think I'll look in on Jamie. He's finally fallen off to sleep. Joe and Horst just won't leave him. I think you and Jess have a great deal to talk about.
it pretty hard. I got thrown. I leave that kind of work for them that can hack it. Jim, I'm sorry you get. Well, I'm sorry. What happens? You study no watching. Oh, a little of both. What I was trying to say back there was, uh, you break something at your age, you'll mend quick. <laughs> Easy ride for a young buck. Yeah. Don't mind, just saddle my horse. Hey, Bronco, I heard you had a spill today. There's no order here for a new windmill. Well, Paul, the crew only struck water out there yesterday. Then we needed the windmill yesterday. Well, fine, I'll ride into Virginia City. Never mind, I'll take care of it. Yeah, well, it could have been a dry well, too, you know. Yeah. Yes, but it wasn't. This Cass Breckenridge, that uh, North Ranch foreman, the fellow you hired six months ago when I was in San Francisco. It was a year ago we hired him, Paul. Whenever. I see he's been buying some land for us. Well, if you mean the tumble K, it sort of fell into his lap. No owner died, and the widow wanted to sell it and move east. Got it for a good price, $7 an acre. I thought he was to report here in person from now on, not report anymore by mail. Yeah, well, that's what we thought. Yeah, Paul, maybe you got tied up with that land deal or something. Well, he's not important. I'll go up and talk to him next week. Yeah. I'll take care of that. Figures. He gets thrown twice in one day, hurts him where he lives, you gotta have somebody to stump. Any man that's been around horses as long as you have ought to have brains enough to check the cinch before he mounts up. You've been riding that chair so long that you don't know how soft you are or how much time has chopped into you. It's a good thing you got the chair. Big outfit. People to fetch and carry for you because you sure couldn't cut it out there where the work is. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Ben Cartwright. Big name. But if you had to ride the grub trail out where nobody knew you, Ben Brown, not Ben Cartwright. Straddling a piece of crow bait. No fancy clothes, no fine rig. Nothing but dust in your pockets. You couldn't get a job. And if you were lucky enough to find somebody to take pity on you, you wouldn't last to find a bunkhouse. Well, that's your opinion. It's what I know. I'll bet you my shirt, pants, boots, and this $21 that you couldn't get a Ben Brown job and keep it long enough to collect a full payday. Think about that while you're riding your chair.
Mr. Cartwright, good morning. Well, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, I know. It's good to see you. How have you been? What are you doing up this way? <sighs> Carl, I need a favor from you. Let's go inside. You get me a cup of hot coffee, I'll tell you about. Do better than that. I'll give you a whole breakfast. Good. I'm hungry enough to eat one. Fine. Evening. Well, my guess is you're just fixing to leave. Well, not just yet. My, my horse is hurt. Uh, you know you're on my property. Well, I know it's Ponderosa property. Meaning you did see the signs. Hmm. Meaning you did come through my fence. Came through one of the gates. Mm -hmm. Where are you headed? Up country, north. Oh, maybe do a little hunting? Take an antelope or two? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be the first saddle stiff that didn't. And those antelope will be wearing cowhide and the Ponderosa brand when they're shot. Just stand easy. What's your name? Brown. Ben Brown. Have you noticed, Mr. Breckenridge, that most of these bums all go by the name of Brown? Must be the third one we caught this month. Yeah, well, you're poaching or hiding one. You got some place special to go, Mr. Brown, or are you just riding? Riding? Till I find work? Oh, no saddle stiffs on my payroll. Oh, I don't even want the likes of you riding through. I let one of you stay, and next thing you know, you'll be swarming all over the place. 
Oh, you're getting out of here, Mr. Brown. Same way you came in. I will. At daylight. You leave now. And we'll be back this way in an hour or two. And you had better be long gone. Gunbelt on the hitch rack. Uh, see, my horse is lame, and he. Uh, well, I, I need some medication and uh, feed and rest overnight. All right, Mister. Step inside, and we'll talk. Sit down. His horse is hurt, like he said. What's your name? I'll go on, tell her. Ben Brown. Say who we are, Paul. Hmm? Oh, Paul Walker. I'm Mrs. Sally. This here's the Raptor W Ranch. How come you picked our place? Remember, I, uh, I saw the light. And my horse had gone just about as far as he could. I was hoping I could stay in your barn overnight out of the wind. Well, we've had supper, but there's the savings on the stove. That'd be extra work, ma'am. I wouldn't want to trouble you. Shames me I didn't offer sooner. We never used to have to wait a minute to offer anybody but luck. Yeah, until we learned better. Where are you from, Brown? Uh, south, uh, Carson City way. His ain't a Ponderosa horse. I studied the brand. You can wash up on the porch. Sally will fix you a meal. Thank you. You holding that rifle won't help his appetite any. Hmm? Oh, no, I... I expect not. You know, I took him for a common drifter at first, but he seems to be better spoken than most I've met. You let him stay, won't you? Cold wind blowing, he's near beat out. There's plenty of room in the barn. I, I suppose he's welcome. No, I got a feeling about him, Paul. He could be the answer to all our... To your prayers? You back to praying again, Sally? Well, I, I never stopped. Be two or three days before he's healed and fit to ride. Well, I can lead him. He won't like it. He can walk for me. Walking a hill of the healing. Stall's not being used. You're welcome to stay. Well, that's, uh, that's very kind of you. I, I, I uh, some work that needs doing, I'd be happy to do it. Told you. Well, she's been uh, pushing me to ask if you're looking for a job. As a matter of fact, I am. Well, I uh, guess I do need a, an all-around hand. Uh, I'm afraid to be trading your bedroll for a, a lantern or just about hard work, short money. Ten dollars a month and found. I know it's not enough, but it's, it's all I can afford to pay. Good meals. You won't go hungry. Well, you, you've hired yourself a hand. Well, <laughs> good. I'll call you the son of Oh, good. Thank you. Come on, Sally. Good night. Good night.
Something I gotta say. It wouldn't be honest not to tell you this, but you go to work for me and you're right in the middle of a range war. Be just the two of us against a ranch called the Ponderosa and its owner, a thief named Ben Cartwright. Cartwright? I, uh, seem to have heard that name. Now, look, you can just change your mind and move on. No hard feelings. Well, I, uh, I need the job. I think I'll stick around. Good. section finished, Mr. Brown. You can take a rest if you feel the need to. Thank you. What about yourself? I can't afford to. As soon as we get this fence built, we can get to the important work. Such as? Gathering up what's left of my herd. 240 head last count. Most of them are in that brushing up those draws. That's funny. Good grass out in the open. Well, they didn't hit that brush on their own. You might say they were encouraged some. You see, that's government grass out there. And the grazing rights are least to me. But there's no way I can stop riders from crossing it. And they do. Ponderosa riders. Two or three at a time, not going any place, just... Driving my cattle into the brush. You see him do it? No. No, they keep a lookout. The time I get here, there's nothing in sight but jackrabbits. If I was you, I'd... Uh, I'd tell the law about this. Oh, I did that. Had myself a 40-mile ride for nothing. The sheriff says I have to have proof, and... proof I haven't got. This war I hired into. How long has that been going on? Oh, for me, about uh, three months. Come on, get up, get up there. Get along. Before that, Breckenridge was busy with old Charlie King at the Tumble K. Busy? How? Oh, hay stack fires, gut fences, poison. Old Charlie had 600 head. Had two top hands before Breckenridge ran him out of the country. Then the rustling started. I got no proof, but I'd say that Breckenridge was doing some night riding. And old Charlie, he tried to do the work of three men until his heart gave out. Then Breckenridge bought the Tumble K. Bought it for Ben Cartwright. Dollar an acre. One lousy dollar. 
Buildings, chattels, all the livestock that was left, about 200 head. Dollar an acre. Seems to me somebody ought to do some talking to Ben Cartwright. After what he did to Bertha King? Not me. The only place I want to see him is over the sights of a rifle. But he stays out of sight. Breckenridge does all of his rough work, him and some hired guns. The main reason we got to get that fence finished is so we can hold my cattle on my land till I can get the buyer out here from Unionville. We'll start at the top of that north slope and drive them out of the brush and drift them down to that holding ground. I packed the lunches. And you tell me where and I'll bring you a hot supper. Well, we should be at Big Meadow, honey. Just watch for the dust. Another biscuit, Mr. Bryan? Mm, yes, ma'am. The best biscuits I've ever had. Thank you. We need a hundred head prime, or near prime. Kind of early for a round up, isn't it? Not when you got money owing and no other way to pay. <laughs> Should have spent the night out here with a rifle. Yeah. Well, I guess we ought to clean up the mess before whatever cattle are left to cut the ribbons and the wire. Yeah. Mr. Walker. Well, you've had some tough luck, huh? Cattle tore down your new fence. No. Riders tore it down. Your riders. No, that's not nice, Mr. Walker. We haven't been this way for some time. Well, you got a new hand, huh? Seems I've seen you someplace before. We run you off once, Mr. Ben Brown. What do you want? I'll get to that. Right now, I'm talking to your new hand. You know, you'd have been a lot wiser if you just kept on riding. I like it here. You're on my land. Get off. Mr. Walker, I've come to make you an offer. Now, you'll be moving your family out shortly, and you'll want some traveling money. Now, you leave that herd right where it is, and I'll give you $500 cash. Oh, a generous man, isn't he, Mr. Brown? That's about one-sixth of what my herd is worth. And I'll tell you something. You take it, or you'll regret it. Get off of my land, Breckenridge. It's just not safe for you to go in town alone. Ah, uh, don't you worry about me, honey. I'll be back early tomorrow. I should be back by, by noon tomorrow. You will see the sheriff, won't you? Oh, all right. It'll, it'll be a waste of time, but I'll do it. All right. The main reason I'm going, Mr. Brown, I want to get an old friend of mine, Jim Tiller, the, the Omaha Cattle Company buyer out here, when we finish Roundup. Uh -huh. Oh, it'll be a help if you'd clean up that mess that Breckenridge made of our fence while I'm gone. I plan to. And while I'm in town, I'll, I'll try and hire another hand if I can find one who'll work for $10 a month and found. Oh, well, by the way, if Breckenridge tries anything, it, it won't be until after dark. And I'd thank you to keep an eye on the house. Depend on it. Yeah, anchor. Battle axe, we got some work to do.
I had to come ask. Man says you're Ben Brown. Looks like you took that bet I offered. I did. World's full of surprises. I didn't tell him you weren't Ben Brown. I didn't tell him anything. I just rolled up my bed and rode out. Why? Can you do the work? Tickled me at first, working for Cartwright after Cartwright fired me. I met some snakes in my time, but that Breckenridge is the worst. How long have you been working here? Week tomorrow. Long enough to know what goes on. Yeah, I heard what happened at the Tumble K. Pretty fancy stealing goes on in your name. I expect you'll be changing to your Cartwright clothes and slapping Breckenridge with a paycheck. Well, send the man down the road to do his stealing somewhere else doesn't do much good. Sounds like you're fixing to slap him in the Iron Hotel. Well, a fellow that hides his tracks as cute as he does, that's pretty hard to do. All I can do is try. Pretty neat trick if you can do it. Ought to be kind of interesting to watch. You know, a fellow that would hire Ben Brown ought to jump at a chance to get a real top hand. I got my shirt, pants, boots, and $21 riding on what you do. I better stick around and take care of my interests. I'll talk to the boss. I'll put in a word for you. Coffee, Mr. Walker? No, thanks. How's everything? He's pulling quiet. Yeah, well, I'll go sing him to sleep. You're doing better than I thought you could. Well, it's still a long time till payday. Well, don't you worry none about me. They just can't wait to see you riding out of here bare as a billiard ball. Never happened. As long as I got a feather and a blanket. That herd getting spooky, or is it me? Must be you. See who stampeded the cattle? Yeah, one rider. He, he was waving a slicker. 
I heard others. I'd tell that to the sheriff, and he'd say I was... I was seeing my own shadow. One good thing, though. The cattle won't run far in the dark, and it'll... It'll be easy to pick them up tomorrow. You're not riding tomorrow. I've got to. Jim Tiller will be out here in a few days to buy my cattle. What you've got to do is go to bed. I can't. Don't you worry. We'll have the hundred head waiting in your land when the buy gets here. Yeah. No trouble, Mr. Walker. Be an easy day. Well, I'll say one thing. You volunteer real good. I didn't hear you backing off. Couldn't. That Walker's quite a man. I tell you how he got that gimp leg? No, never mention a word. When I was over at the North Ranch, I heard it in bits and pieces. Bunkhouse talk. Walker and Breckenridge had a fist fight. Something about poison grass. Walker got in one punch, and then three of them jumped him. They gave him a wrecking job, and they ran over him with a wagon. More than one snake over there, a whole nest of them. They'll be waiting for us. Yeah, I expect they will. Well, looks like it's going to be kind of a noisy day tomorrow. Yeah, could be. My horse pulled up lame when I came in after the wagon. I'm going to have to ride one of Mr. Walker's. You got any good ones? Oh, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, he's got one real good working horse. I gotta tell you about old Battleaxe. He's mean in the morning, just hates to go to work. Well, you rode him yesterday. So I did. That old crow bait took me by surprise. Cactus. Man once told me some men can cut it when the going gets rough, some men can't. Just one more chance. I'll stick closer to him than his skin. Yeah, well, we can't risk it now. We got a roundup to make. Take my horse. You win this one, Mr. Brown. But it's still a long time till payday. We don't have to dig out of the brush. Agnes, take a look back there up in the hill. That's one of the snakes, Tate. Unless my eyesight's failing me. They're waiting for us to fix the fence so they can tear it down again. Agnes? Apaches do the same thing. Try to throw the fear into you. It works sometimes. I've seen people run like chickens trying to hide from the shadow of a hawk. Uh, maybe we ought to give them something to think about. Yeah? Like what? Like something noisy. Like the 4th of July. Cactus, you work the North Ranch. How many cattle tanks does this flume supply? Four? They got diversion gates they turn on and off. Well, if this flume wasn't here, Mr. Breckenridge would have himself somewhat of a problem, wouldn't he? Yeah. Six or seven hours, cattle will be out of water unless Breckenridge and his crew want to carry it over in their hats. 
water wagons, rebuilding this plume. That'd keep them busy for quite a while. You mean you're going to dynamite your own flume? Ben Cartwright can afford it. And ben Brown would sure enjoy it. Yeah. a fine mess of kindling. That'll be harder to put back together than a busted egg. Yeah. What are you planning on doing with that? I'm just looking. Well, that means a all hands, cook, chuck wagon to rebuild. Well, I got to say one thing about Walker. He's trying. That's more than Charlie King did. Yeah. Somebody's trying. But I don't think it's Walker. Bound. I guess I should have hit him twice. Yeah, you should have shot him. How many do you make it? Over a hundred? Yeah. And 15 to 20 head down in the lower meadow. We'll pick them up on the way. No lookouts on the hills. You better go on ahead. I'll trail along behind just in case. Yeah, all right. They did it, Paul. It was a lucky day for us when you hired Mr. Brown. Yes. Yes, it certainly was. Most of them look good. I did see a few calls. Not in that herd, you didn't. When you buy cattle for a living, you always see a few calls. It keeps the price lower. In this case, we'll call them all prime, and I'll give you the top dollar. You're doing, Mr. Brown. You and Cactus got him here. I. I gotta say. Well, I gotta say thanks. Well, I'll tell Cactus what you said, but. Like Cactus did say, it's an easy day. Sign and sealed, huh? Yep. I kind of thought that Breckenridge would try one more stampede before we got him here. Yeah, so did I. Well, the boss is grateful. Oh, uh, he told me to say that uh, one of these days you might even make cop hand. <laughs> and one of these days I might even stay on top of old Battle Axe. Well, it wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I got an itch. Huh? Breckenridge ain't one to back off. No. No, he ain't. Let's take a look around.
get it done, they might be back any minute. Somebody out front, too. Drop the guns. There are three horses out there. The wreck range must be in the house. Don't fret about us. We're going to get along just fine. There's some pig and strings right in front of you, Mr. Tate. You're going to tie up Mr. Yoakum. Tight now. talking about? You heard him. I'm Ben Cartwright. I don't believe it. You will. You know, there's some men just can't cut it out where the work is. Some lose their shirt, pants, and boots. You still got a blanket and a feather? <laughs> I said some pretty early things about you, but I never thought I'd see the day I'd be saying thank you to Ben Cartwright. Well, you don't have to say another word. I just want you to know there'll be full payment to you and to Brother King and anybody else was hurt. Whenever you're ready. Time to go. We'll get this rig back to you by the end of the week. Fine. Thanks. For everything. Oh. Have a... Oh, uh, I sure would like to... Buy that battle axe for me. I got a couple of sons I'd like them to meet. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't have to tell you. You got your old job back if you want it. Well, that's mighty generous of you, Mr. Cartwright. Well, I'm glad that settled then. Well, uh, not quite. Oh? Ah, I see. You, uh, you want more money, huh? No. I want a different kind of a boss. I want a boss that's not so ornery and crazy. It changes his mind all the time. I want a gentleman for a boss. That's the reason I'm throwing in with Mr. Walker. Oh, uh, no hard feelings, Mr. Cartwright. 
<laughs> you old coot. <laughs> I think it worked good now. Thanks, Papa. Sandor, come on. Now you stay here. Time of day. Look at this house. All falling down. You do nothing. I fix harness. Now it's time to plow field. You fix harness after supper. It's too late to plow then. You know I work hard. All my life I work hard. Excuse, excuse. You think you fool me? You don't. What you try is to keep me from my son. You answer! It's truth! Yes! No! Anna. Anna. Why so much trouble, Anna? Anna! Anna! Chandor? Take it easy, take it easy. Now what is it? The fighting, the breaking, smashing everything in the house. Come on, climb aboard. Now get your arms around me. Ready? We had a small accident. Oh, well, Shando thought it was some kind of trouble. You said that, boy? No, a little argument. Uh, the tablecloth caught on a uh, few broken dishes, a lot of noise, but... Anna! Miss Kosova? Chandor told Mr. Cartwright that we were having much trouble. Oh, no, no trouble. Uh, the cloth got caught on my basket. No trouble. Chandor? Children have such vivid imaginations. Well, that's nothing serious. I wish I could say stay. Have coffee, glass of wine, but... Oh, it's all right. Thanks, just the same. You cannot blame Anna. 
Back in old country, her papa is shopkeeper. Mine only peasant. So much different. So Anna expect maybe castle. I try. I try hard. But it no work. Nick, Nick, not good enough, man. Oh, come on, you've had a run of bad luck. It'll change. No, it cannot. Of course it'll change. That's the nature of luck. It changes. Luck? What is this luck? Demons, witches, evil spirits. I learned this from my grandmother. Well, this is a different country, so we have different spirits. Now, you work hard, and your luck will change. No, it's truth. I'll do anything I can to help. Nobody can help. It's not worth bother. All right. That Chando was mistaken. Mr. Cartwright, if it happens again, let it go. Please. Fine. You can help. Pray for me. What are you doing? I'm looking at the flowers. You got work to do. You're supposed to speak post, go to town, buy wire. Pretty. So pretty. You come out now. You come out. Oh, come out. No, no, don't. They are so pretty. Stop talking. Go. Get on the wagon. Go. And the seed, don't forget the seed. Oh, well, hello, Shandor. Is your mother home? Mom went down the road to see Papa. Oh. Well. What are you making there? It's a bow. Hmm. Well, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good one. Hey, Mr. Cartwright, do you know anything about curses? Uh, what kind of curses are you talking about, young fella? You know, a curse like a witch. Miss Griggs at school says there's no such thing. Well, you mean the kind of curses that people put on other people, hmm? Yeah, that's it. Can, can someone really do it? Well, a lot of people talk about them. Few even believe in them, but uh, I think I'll go along with Miss Griggs. Oh, hello, Mrs. Kasova. Mr. Cartwright, won't you come in? Uh, Miss Kasova, I was uh, just passing by, and I thought. Since I'm on my way to Cottesville tomorrow, and you have some friends in the Serbian community there, perhaps you and Nick would like to send a message or a letter with me. I... No, 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 thank you. Mr. Cartwright, please, sit down. Well, just for a moment. How <sighs> have you been? Good, thank you. Mr. Cartwright, I ask you for help. Yes, of course. I want you to take my husband. Mm -hmm. Lock him up. He's not right. He has a sickness in the head. Oh, what, uh, what makes you think that? I see the signs. The flowers. He stopped work to look at the flowers. <clears throat> well, uh, 
Miss Kosova. I look at flowers. <laughs> um, what's so strange about that? Nick's a very kind, he's a sensitive man. I he know. loves flowers. I know, I know. You think Nick is very kind, very gentle. That is what you see. All right. If you don't want to help me, please, Mr. Cartwright, give me the name of someone who might. <sighs> Just because a man likes flowers. I have proof. I cannot show it to you. It's on my body. In my country, it is not so unusual for a man to beat his wife. I am not talking about beating. I am talking about killing. Mrs. Kosova. It's more than just flowers. I know Nick. I live with him. I feel it. Every day, it's getting worse and worse. Mr. Cartwright, I am afraid. Do you really believe that Nick would harm you? Kill me! Or my son! Or both of us! What do you have? Whiskey. Tate. Uh huh. Mene museum platimo vishe taski. Hey, don't you talk American? Me vish sa da gladu ye mo. Hey, listen to that. Un toko chitiri mizetsa menismo y elenisha samo krompir. What kind of talking is that? Beats me. Hey, why don't you shut up? Otoku shatire me meset, huh? I said shut up! You fault. To God, listen. What are you jawing about? No good, Turk. You wait. You wait, you see. Someday, someday we drive you from my country! Pull off! <laughs> hey, stop it! Hey, stop it! You guys want to fight? Take it outside! What's this all about? Okay, Cherokee, what happened? You always blame me. Ask anybody. He hit me with a bottle. He's got that sodbuster sickness. It comes from pushing a plow. Who started it? He did. Call me a no good Turk. I'm a good American. He did hit him with a bottle. Half full, too. You better lock him up, Clem. He's wild. I'm gonna do better than that. You help Dave bring him over to the jail. I'm gonna lock you all up. Try to, try to take some away. 
Your answer is true, yes. Oh. Luck. There's luck, demons, witches, evil spirits, and learn from my grandmother. I look at flowers. So pretty. I love you, Anna. No, Anna. No, Anna. No! No! Leave me out! Will you be quiet and go back to bed? No sign of nowhere, Paul. She sure made a mess in yeah. The fire could have been started by a spark in the stove. Or a kerosene lamp falling over. Yeah, or it could have been started by Nick. Well, that would explain why Mrs. Kosova and the boy aren't here, but I should find it hard to believe that a man would try to burn up his wife and son. I... That leaves her, then. Set a fire just to discredit her husband. It's happened before, Paul. On my way to Carterville, I'll drop by that Serbian community and ask a few questions about Nick and Anna. Why don't you drop by here later this afternoon? I'll do it. See you later. Please, please get up. I can't carry you. Just a little further. Come. Where are we going? To a friend. Where's Papa? I don't know. I want Papa. Harry. What are you doing here? You obey. You obey. Now, Mr. Sova, there's no need for that. He'll get himself killed. What? I told you. He tried to kill us. He tried to burn down the house. Who tried to kill us? Now, look, Mr. Still, you don't believe me. Well, uh, well, why, why don't you jump up on the buckboard and we'll talk about it? Come on. No. I want to ride. No! Mr. Cartwright doesn't really want to help us. Are you going to see your friends? Yes. They will believe me. Well, just take a look at your boy. He's tired. Now, think of him for a change. All right, for a little while. Come on. That's it. Let's give your mother some room here. Mrs. Kosova. You might as well ride along with us. It'll be faster that way. No. Well, then put your bundles back at the buckboard here. so you'll make a good impression on the judge. Yeah. All right, let's go, one at a time. What's the matter, Cherokee? Got the whips and jangles? It comes as no surprise. Well, morning, Glory, I guess you get to go first. This bucket's for washing the soaps in the bottom. Let's go, you two, move! Meet me in course, Dave, whenever they're ready. Sure thing. Hey, who's the judge? Jack Chadney, same as last time you two were here. Oh, 30 days or $30. And me with 30 cents. You're clean enough. Hey, they'll hang you. They sure will. Stopping. 
Get something to eat. Then Shandor and I go on alone. You're not going anywhere until we've eaten. Shandor, let's see what Hop Singh has for us in this basket, huh? There we go. There we are. Miss Kosovo, won't you join us? How can you talk of eating when our lives are in danger? Shandor, I'll bet you anything that there's a sandwich in here specially for you. Here you are. You take that and eat it over there by that wagon. And you stay there. You hear me? You think I'm foolish because I want my son where I can see him? I think you're letting your fears run away with you. You still believe my fears are nothing. Fire! That is nothing? I started that myself? I didn't say that. Oh, I am a stupid, ignorant woman. But I know what people think. You like Nick. You don't like me. But still, couldn't I be telling the truth? Of course. I am not frightened for myself. My life is over. I am frightened for my son. He must live. He will live. And so will you. I have a sandwich. I am not hungry. Now, a man just doesn't go crazy all of a sudden. I know. Now, how long have you known? Maybe since before we were married. Before? Then why did you marry him? Nick was strong, good looking. He always did funny things. One day he stole a, a lamb that the Turks were preparing for a feast. And when they came after him, he, he rode the pots and pans down the hill. Did your parents approve of this marriage? Never. Nick kidnapped me. Yes, it was a custom in my country. I was glad. I loved him. Hmm. Well, it seems to me that you were both young and vital and reckless. And... Yes, I was a different woman then. But Nick, he was always in trouble. One day, the Turkish mayor hit him over the head with a cane. Why? He was against the taxes. Life is hard for a peasant in my country. We go now, yes? Yes. Right. Plenty of time. He's been here. Horses have been running for over a mile. They need some rest. I told you, Nick is here. Here or two miles back. I haven't seen a soul. Now look, Mrs. Kosova, you may be right about your fears, but that doesn't give you the right to whip my team. To you, this is just another outing, another trip to Cartersville. Well, yes, it is. I haven't seen anybody. Now, is this another one of your feedings, or is it based on something a little more substantial? No, it's the flowers in the road. Didn't you see them? Well, ma'am, there are flowers all over this place. Before we were married, in our village, Nick and I were not allowed to speak to each other. He would come down to the well to watch me, or he'd come to the stream to watch me wash clothes. And often, he would leave flowers in the place where he thought I was going to be. Well, the flowers he used for... There. Get behind those bushes. Mama? Shh, keep quiet. Quiet, all right. You 
you see anyone? No. You stay here. You stay out of sight. see anybody. But whoever it was was shooting at me. It was Nick. No. Uh, I'd have to see him before I could say it's Nick. But I can say it. Let me stay here with him. You take, take Shandu. No. Nick, it doesn't matter. Stay here. Is that you? You and I have no quarrel. Stop shooting and let's talk. He's gonna kill him. No, he's only trying to save our lives. Papa wouldn't hurt me. He wouldn't hurt anybody. I won't let him shoot Papa. I won't. No, him. no stay down. You want Papa to die? You put a curse on him. I heard the horse running. Yeah, he rode out. And he will come back. How far is the literature to place from here? About four miles? Yes, I think so. And the rest of the settlement? It's north. The nearest house is about two miles. All right, let's get moving. Come on, Shandor. Shandor. I got to know somebody to hurt. Hey, Clint, come on. Hello, Joe. Hello, Oz. Oh. Howdy, Clem. You want some chicken? No, no, thanks. Get far around? No, he's on his way to Carterville. I left early this morning. Got some coffee. No. I'm looking for a lieutenant, Nick Casola. He tried to kill one of my deputies. Nick? That's right. Two witnesses saw him do it. He tried to break up the golden nugget. Almost killed a man to beat a drunk charge. He's got to be crazy. He must have set that fire. Yeah. Fire? What fire? Over to Casola's. Me and Paul went over there this morning. There'd been a fire in the kitchen. Did you talk to Mrs. Casola? No. She and the boy were gone. They were probably headed for that Serbian settlement over by Cotterville. Isn't Nick armed? Yes, he took a rifle and he's got a pocket full of ammunition. But you don't think he'd harm his family? Yeah. Joe, you and me better ride for Cotterville. Huh? So, All right, good. I'll keep an eye on the Casola place. If he's not following Mrs. Casola, he'll probably come back there. Yeah. We'll see you later, ma'am.
The house is at the bottom of the hill. Wait here. Make sure it's all clear. to know. Why, it's Janice, a good friend since we come to America. See the man you were coming to see? Yes. Such a good friend. How many people live in that house? Just Janice. He lived alone since his wife died. Now, you wait here. I mean that. Don't even think of moving until I give a signal. just as quickly as you can onto the porch and into the house. Keep clear of the window. <sighs> Chandler, you feel any better? No. <sighs> Neither do I. Mr. Cartwright, 
I have decided. You and Shandor must get to the settlement. Look. I couldn't possibly get that far with this bullet in my leg. What's on your mind? Perhaps if he killed me, his anger will be stopped. Don't be ridiculous. No, we'll figure something out. What? What will we figure out? He's out there. He's waiting. what he's doing. Papa is sick. Why is he sick? You remember when I tell you about the old country long ago and why we come here? Because we are hungry? Well, we think that if we come to America and we work hard, we'll not be hungry anymore. But you do work hard. And so did Papa. We had bad luck. You mean curses? No, oh, no. Not like you think. First there was the floods, and then no water, and then, then the locust. Remember? Yeah, I remember the locust. Your father was far away from his land, and from his people. And he felt alone and frightened. Papa was frightened? Shandor, even a very strong man can become frightened when, when problems become so big and he doesn't know what to do about them and he feels all alone and, and sometimes he, he becomes frustrated because he can't do anything about them. And he becomes angry. And sometimes he does the wrong things.
Looks like Pa caught up with him. Yeah. Anna? Anna? On the floor, both of you. Anna? 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 Before we were married in our village, he would sometimes come to my father's house and call my name like that. Anna! Anna! Find them? Yeah. They're a real nice family, old friend of the Kosovas. Yeah? They're more than happy to take them in. Great, great. You see, Hoss has the team all hitched up. Everything's all set. Climb aboard, John Nor. Good, good. Well, Miss Kosova, I guess it's time we... Mr. Cartwright, I, I want to thank you. I know that I have been very difficult. Strange. But for a long time, I have felt so frozen, afraid to feel. Well, I was kind of slow myself, figuring things out. It's my fault, the way I am. It's very hard for me to tell you how grateful I am for our lives and for your friendship. I wish there was something that I could do for you. Well, you, uh, you make a new life for yourself and for Shandor, with your old friends. I will try. For a long time, I have felt so afraid. Now there is no reason to feel afraid. I have been remembering Nick as he was long ago in our village. I loved him then. You keep thinking of him that way. Take care of your mother now. See you, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. 